Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about editing on NAS. More precisely I want to talk about video editing on a 10 GBE enabled NAS. We've had several 10 gigabit Ethernet NASs here on the channel and what I wanted to show you was just how good a 10 GBE NAS is for editing. Because it's not really much of a secret that to edit on a standard NAS over 1 gigabit Ethernet, so RJ45 predominantly, and what you will find when you edit is an enormous lag factor, which really undermines the utility of NAS. If you do want to edit photo and videos, um, you do find that if you use your localized storage, your hard drive or SSD in your PC or laptop, um, the results are much, much quicker than trying to utilize assets that you've stored on a NAS over 1 GBE. And of course, the solution to this is utilizing 10 gigabit Ethernet, 10 GBE. And with 10 GBE coming down in cost exponentially, the need and the utility of a 10 gigabit Ethernet NAS in your environment is very, very attractive because you don't need to have a switch in order to utilize 10 GBE. If you have um, a standard um, PCIe slot available or you've got a Thunderbolt slot and you want to use a 100 pound Thunderbolt uh, 10 GB adapter, what you can do is directly feed a NAS um, via a cable connection, a, a, a CAT6 cable or SFP, if that's your 10 GB, directly into your editing machine. You can connect the two directly without the need of a switch. Likewise, most NASs that have 10 GBE also have one GBE port to connect to your network and the internet. The result being that not only can you edit files directly on the NAS, but on top of that, the files can then be distributed from the NAS, thereby removing layers from your workflow and making things a great deal easier. So, in order to show this point more clearly, what I've done is I'm utilizing a very old project that I did on the program PowerDirector. It was one that I had to do on the quick, and I know it's not Photoshop and Elements and all that kind of Final Cut Pro and stuff like that, but we're saving that for a Thunderbolt 3 video coming up next month. But today I want to talk about PowerDirector 12, because PowerDirector 12 is probably one of the least resource intensive programs out there. And it's one of the main reasons people have warmed to it over the years. And whenever I've had to do a very quick project, uh, something where I've had to get a video out there within a matter of, you know, an hour, hour and a half, PowerDirector has always kind of been my fallback position for in Windows use, not Mac use. Now, what I've got on screen right now is I'm going to get this kick started. This is um, editing being done on a local drive. That is files that are stored on an SSD inside my localized machine. Um, I'm going to be doing an edit here on uh, a 10 megabits per second bitrate 1080p output of this and I'm going to be storing this file locally. So it's just again all the assets I'm utilizing for this video all are local. Every single version, every part of this I'm doing is a localized edit. There are no network abilities and as you see on screen what I've put is Task Manager to, to show you just how much data and which resources are used throughout this process. So this video is about 10 minutes long when it was in its edit, and don't worry, I'm gonna speed things up exponentially. And as you can see on the screen, the counter does begin, and that will speed up, don't worry. Now, what this was to show is just how long it takes to edit about a one gigabyte WMV file utilizing about five layers in PowerDirector while at the same time using recordings in MP4 and more. So we're gonna speed up that dial now and we're gonna see just how long it takes. Now, as we go through this, it's worth mentioning that on the top right of the screen there, you can see that obviously the editing is gonna utilize all eight cores of my CPU. It's using about five gig of my memory and most of the work is being done on that localized disk. Uh, both C and D, where C is my CPU disk, you know, the one for my boot, and D is for my um, on my archive and all these older files. I've got some of my templates for logos and some of the other stuff that I've pulled over um, from my Photoshop. Now, uh, the Ethernet, as you can see, there is being utilised and it's spiking, but it never really leaves um, in terms of reading about 100 kilobits per second, and a lot of that is just because of, in the background, I do have a 10 GBE NAS connected. Also, you can see that GPU use is sitting roughly, at, you know, somewhere in the mid 30 percentage. Uh, and you can see this video is about 25 minutes into its encoding path. And you can see we've already encoded, you know, more than, you know, five sixths of the whole video and it will come to an end shortly. And we'll see just how long it takes for this to encode, encode this footage. And I look forward to showing you comparative results with different 10 GBE NAS. So there we are, it ranked in at 32 minutes. 32 minutes and 36 seconds to be precise. And as you can see after the video has ended, 
we can see that the CPU and memory usage has halted as well because we've held the video tight at that point. So what we'll do now is we'll make our way over to the first of our 10 GBE tests. And just in the spirit of fairness, I wanted to look at a Netgear NAS. I wanted to look at the Netgear 524X. Uh, this is an Intel Atom-based NAS. And this Intel Atom-based NAS, is, we're gonna see how this performs doing the same task that we set before. So as you can see from the screen, I've moved all of the um, assets over to our 10 GBE Netgear enabled NAS, as you can see on the screen. So all of the assets that we're now using for this video have been moved over and I've changed all the directories over to that Netgear network drive. And it's that simple, setting up a network drive, map the drive, and then you can edit your files directly over the network. Now, thanks to 10 GBE, this is significantly easier than if I tried to edit on the other local device. You can see there's our local edit from earlier on. And now we're preparing for the 10G test over that Netgear um, X series NAS. Um, and again, we're going to see right now because in theory, this should work out at almost exactly the same speed as the previous edit. There shouldn't be really that much of a difference. If it is slower, I'll be surprised just because that was using a six gigabits per second access point and this was using four drives in a RAID 0 um, over 10 GBE. So straight away we've got that edit and we're going to speed up the clock again in a second. As you can see during the course of this I've um, recorded there in the background lots of audio that I thought might be handy in case the audio doesn't come through. I do recommend anyone doing tests like this does use a, a half decent capture card as I didn't and what I found out during the course of this is obviously I'm using a lot of the GPU and therefore as you can see the CPU usage is a huge amount happening there from PowerDirector and the screen recorder too. So once again, maybe it would have been better if I'd left this on the other stats from before, but you will see more in other videos. Um, so carrying on, um, we've, we've moved over now, and as straight away, we've gone from kilobits per second, we've broke into megabits per second um, in that Ethernet control. Um, CPU usage is still high, memory usage is exactly the same, but those disks now are being utilized. Disk one, where my previous archive was, isn't being accessed at all as you can see uh, more from that the gpu is now being utilized y y um, less now that really surprised me here because uh, uh, most of the time the gpu was living somewhere um, as high as 42 in places but this never seems to break that 40 percent mark hardly at all and i am looking forward to looking back at the logs and finding out what exactly made all the difference there that i wasn't using as much of the gpu using a 10 gbe edit as I was in the previous iteration. But straight away, as you can see, we're still weighing in at about 30 minutes, same as the previous video. And I do believe this ends up resulting in just a fraction longer. Um, but the video itself, the way it ends, it ends at about 30 there. So once again, what we'll do now is we're gonna make our way um, into the next part of this video where we're gonna look at a QNAP now. So we're gonna look at the TS932X. I do recommend you check out that video. It should be with us very soon. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.